Hi, everybody. It's Thursday, uh, July 14th. Uh, it's great to be with you today. I hope you're having a good week. Um, I'm going to read you today a little longer section, but I, I think it's so important. Now, remember uh, the, the rules of the game uh, uh, with, this, uh, with this series as we look at these hard questions, right? The elephant in the room questions is that God loves us. His word, the Bible, is truth to us, and they're always words of love to us and their guidance. And the third thing is that we live in love. Uh, and, and, and we've kind of uh, gone through that uh, the last three days, but this, this reading is a little long. It, it kind of pulls us together. This God of love speaks to us through his word to guide our lives and, and, uh, and the like, uh, and then also points us to a place of love as, as we live our, our lives. So here, here we go. Uh, this is from Romans, the first chapter. Uh, because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. So uh, uh, because of their sin, God finally said, okay, you can have it your own wrong way. Right? That's about what he's saying here. Uh, Even the women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves a due penalty for their perversion. So this is one of the places in, in Scripture that God... Um, in his love speaks to us uh, and says, no, homosexuality is not part of my plan for you. Okay, it's a, you were created male and female uh, and, and you were created to uh, live uh, it within uh, the marriage bonds, but the, that's where sexual relations is meant to be, right? Uh, so he's speaking, he's guiding our lives here. And he goes on, furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They became filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. So, so now it, it just goes on with this, with this laundry list in a sense, right? And it says here, um, they are gossip, slanderers, God-haters, God -haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They envy at ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these things, very, these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. So they, 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 right? But then this changes. And, and I want you to remember, this begins chapter 2 in Romans, but I'm going to read. Um, but remember, there was no chapter markings in the original, right? Uh, they were added later to make it easier to find what we're going to read and so forth. So... So it, it, it goes on, you. So all of, all of a sudden, from the, from the they, it becomes the you. You, therefore, have no excuse. You who pass judgment on someone else. For whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself because you who pass judgments do the same things. So what it's saying here, here is you are the they. We are the they. We have all sinned sexually. And we've sinned in every other way, right? So we have no right. The judgment here, certainly we judge right and wrong. God does. He shows us right and wrong. He guides our lives that way, right? Um, but this is the, a condemning judgment. Only that's always in the hands of God. Uh, we have no right to condemn anyone. Why? Because we have sinned. We have sinned sexually. We have sinned in every way. Uh, and, 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 and it goes on here. It says, now... We who know God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So we do know the truth. So when you, a mere man, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape judge, that God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, tolerance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you toward repentance? So what this is saying is here is you need to reflect God's kindness, his love, to those who, who are, um, who are struggling with sexual sin, whatever that might be. So, so we, we speak the truth because we, we know the truth, right? But we always speak that truth in love. We always create relationship. We always share lives. We always walk with people. Um, and and when, we, when we look to cut them off, uh, when, when we, we have this condemning judgment, we are putting ourselves in the place of God again. Uh, and, and so I, I love this reading because, first of all, it, it shows us God's guide for our life with human sexuality somewhat. Huh? And then it says, though, hey, um, you got no place to judge other people, though, to condemn them, right? 
You speak the truth in love, as it says in Ephesians. That's our guideline. We live in love. We know God's love. We know his word guides us. We always speak his truth in love, uh, and we love people in his name. Uh, so will you pray with me? Dearest Jesus, uh, boy, we thank you for these words. Uh, these words that so clearly show us your guide for our life, but also uh, with respect to human sexuality, but also clearly show us how, how we're called not to condemn others, uh, but to love them and speak the truth uh, in your name. Help us to live in relationship unoffendably uh, with those around us. Um, help us to have your heart of compassion towards those who are struggling. Um, Help us, Lord, to love in your name. We pray in your name. Amen. Okay, we'll see you uh, Sunday, God willing, and then next week. May God be with you. Bye-bye.